all of the interviews were so incredible that, but not, I couldn't use everything because we would still be sitting here tomorrow morning because there was such a wealth of information um, and analysis. But some of the, some of the, I, what I've done is I put the extras, the material from the transcripts that didn't make it into the film, not because it wasn't worthy, but because I couldn't cover everything. If you'll be able to read them. You'll be able to read each chapter has segments from interviews, and if you keep on going back to it, um, you know, I, I have to, con I'm continuing to go through the transcripts to put stuff up. So it's thefightofourlives.com. And now, um, would you, for this question, the his uh, will you repeat your question about uh, the history? She said, will there be, uh, like I can tell you on the Arisani, if I say it correctly, she said it could take a generation, will there have to be a tipping point Finally, able to say this culture will assimilate before you can set some kind of structural policy to address it directly. We, think we, we have to have a terrorist attack. What, you know, what will shift it? That, that seems still so remote. When you're talking about California today, where one in four people of the 40 million were not born in the United States, it would be no problem at all if we were. Uh, loyal to the melting pot paradigm, but in the solid world you have a problem. And so you can see what's happened to the state of California when you're not able to assimilate, intermarry, and integrate uh, immigrant people, and you you prefer the solid world. And that happened in Rome in the fifth century AD, it's happened throughout history. And so the, the great quest is the, the great uh, question is when millions of people who essentially come from countries that don't like the West, that's what their governments say, and they don't want to be there because they feel there's not economic opportunity, security, and freedom, then they go to the West, then you have the strange idea that when they get here, they feel that their careers, whether it's through affirmative action or identity politics, will be enhanced to the degree they criticize the country that took them in, and then they romanticize the country under no circumstances they wish to return to. And when you have that schizophrenic situation, then if something that can't continue, anything that can't continue won't continue. So I think we're getting close to the point, we saw it in the 2016 election, where half the country is saying this doesn't work anymore. Now whether that half is, it just turned out that that was the electoral, more influential half because of these swing states. But in California, I think we've already reached a tipping point, and most people who disagree uh, with the solid goal have, are leaving rather than staying and trying to fight. Yeah. And again, it's, it's the schizophrenic idea that people flee their own countries seeking a Western paradigm, and then when they get to the West, they quickly make the necessary adjustments that criticizing the very paradigm they flee to is more uh, satisfying emotionally for them, but more importantly, in a career trajectory, it's more enhancing for them. And we've got to stop that. We've got to really say things that are sort of illiberal. I know when I'm in my hometown and somebody screams about DACA and he waves the Mexican flag, I say, why would you wave the flag that you, under no circumstances, that country you wish to return to, and you wouldn't honor, honor the one under every circumstance that you demand to stay? And that seems to be so shocking. But Unless we, the host, are, are willing to be very polite, but very confident in our values to welcome people, if we're not willing to do that, then why would we continue? There's no point to it. Because they've shown, Islam says, you people are decadent, you don't believe anything, and we're stronger than you are, then if we prove them wrong, they're right. So that's what we have to do. We have to push back at every man and every way we can. Um, I, I'd like to acknowledge um, another one of the featured commentators who, who's in the audience, um, Eden Moore, would you stand up?
We all have to continue the fight. And thank you for the film. Thank you. Great job. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much for coming. And um, I hope you'll join me in expressing appreciation to the David Horowitz Freedom Center for sponsoring this event. Thank you.